Everybody knows what a so bad it's good horror movie is, and I found the best one from 2023. And for some reason, nobody is talking about it. It's called You're Killing Me. Kind of an ironic title because when I watched it with my wife last night, I almost died laughing. Or Lamau. Also, they didn't name this movie You're Killing Me because of the obvious implication that someone is killing somebody in this movie. It's a phrase that the killer says over and over and over and over. It's very clever. You're killing me. Yes. You're killing me. Yes. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. <laughs> <laughs> the main character named Eden is played by McKaylee Miller. She was also in that horror movie named Ma. I haven't seen it, so I don't have an opinion on it. This is the most fun I've had in a long time. So this high school girl named Eden desperately wants to get into a nice college, but she needs help from this other student's dad, who's a congressman. She wants this rich kid's dad to write her a letter of recommendation or something. I have to say that I appreciate that this movie jumps right into things. It doesn't drag at all, like a lot of other awful horror movies do. Eden and her best friend Zara attend this rich kid's Halloween party with the sole purpose of trying to convince him to ask her dad to help her get admitted into the school of her dreams. At the very beginning of this movie, I was kind of expecting some awkward sexual stuff to happen because of this. Thank God I was wrong about that. This rich kid's name is Barrett, by the way. When they enter the party, they're immediately asked to hand over their phones because Barrett's dad's a congressman and they don't want anyone filming something that might damage the public's perception of him. Congressman Schroeder lives here. You really think we'd be throwing a party? So obviously, this is the way the movie is taking the phones away from the protagonist, so she can't use it later. So at the high school, that these people go to, a girl named Melissa had gone missing, and nobody has seen her since. To absolutely nobody's surprise, the rich kid and his two goons are responsible for this missing girl. Calling this movie predictable is an understatement, and if that was this movie's only flaw, I wouldn't be making this video. Trust me, things get hilarious pretty fast. This rich kid Barrett kind of looks like a cross between Onision and Burt McCracken, the singer from The Used. I kind of hurt my feelings, actually. He kind of acts like Onision too, so I'll just be calling him Onision from here on out. Before the really funny stuff happens in this movie, Eden basically begs Onision for help. She's relentless. She comes across so annoying and desperate. Your dad is on the board at Pembroke, right? What do you think about introducing me to your dad? She just won't leave this dude alone. And it's not like they're friends. At the beginning of the movie, it comes across like they don't know each other very well. They're acquaintances at most. He even says something along the lines of, Damn, bitch, you're really desperate to use me, huh? You're really determined to use me, aren't you? <laughs> But the best character in this movie is Onision's dumbass friend named Gooch. I don't know if that's his nickname or what, but they only ever call him Gooch. Gooch forgot something. Everybody calls him Gooch. Even Onision's parents later in the movie. It is your phone, Gooch. Gooch? His character on IMDb is just named Gooch. Hilarious. I love that his name is Gooch. <laughs> This guy is in the running for the dumbest character in any horror movie I've ever seen. You'll see what I mean later. Zara ends up getting super drunk and eventually Gooch finds her in a bed and he starts taking creepy pictures with her until Eden enters the bedroom. Gooch freaks out and rushes out of the room and he leaves his phone behind. <laughs> You know, the thing that he was using to take these creepy pictures. And the best part is, Gooch had recorded a huge video documenting the entire crime that led to Melissa's death. It's not a short video or anything. Gooch records her all day. And he didn't delete the video off of his phone. What's with the phone? What do you mean? You'd think that the last thing he would leave behind is his phone. But for some dumb reason, he leaves his phone behind. It makes no sense. But whatever. That's that's the least of this dumbass's intellectual crimes. I'll bet that door is unlocked. Eden finds the weird pictures he was taking of Zara, and she swipes through them until she finds the video Gooch took of Onision and Kendra with the missing girl. Kendra is this girl. She's one of Onision's other friends. From here on out, things get so good. Okay, so I gotta ask you guys. What would you do if you attended a party and found a video of a group of kids harassing the girl that went missing from your high school on one of their phones, and it was recorded around the same time that she went missing? Would 
would you, one, go downstairs with this phone where the party is taking place, turn off the music, and announce to the entire room that you have video proof on Gucci's phone that these three were responsible for the missing girl. Or two, assume the worst before you watch the entire video and leave the area with the phone in your possession. Either hide it in your bra or your shoe or somewhere and make a decision about it later when you're alone. Or three, sit in this room and try and watch the entire huge video that's likely many hours long and hope that Gooch doesn't realize his phone is missing and when he does realize it's missing, don't allow him in the room and just hope for the best. If you chose number three, then you did exactly what Eden did. <laughs> Also, the video in question, like it was recorded like a Snapchat video or a TikTok or something like that. I don't know if those apps allow you to record a video that's hours long, but yeah, most phones don't allow you to record and make cuts between one long video. At least my phone can't. Unless, of course, Eden is watching a bunch of separate videos, but she just plays them in succession in the movie. But that wouldn't make any sense because throughout the movie, she refers to it as the video. I wrote her, I saw the video and let me finish watching the video. I've seen the video. Onision is informed by Gooch that Eden has his phone. So obviously Onision knows that there's an incredibly incriminating video on Gooch's phone. But for some weird reason, he didn't have Gooch delete it, which makes no sense. But anyway, let's continue. Well, you wouldn't have to. So these three walk up to the room where Zara and Eden are located. Look at Onision right here. He does not look like an innocent person right now. <laughs> His facial expression is screaming bloody murder. And I know he's on the other side of the door, but it's still kind of funny. Put this guy in a courtroom and he's screwed. Gotcha now, you fucking moron bitch. So Gooch is freaking out and Kendra says to him, dude, chill, it's not like she knows your passcode. And guess what? Gooch doesn't have his phone password protected. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with her? Oh my God. Can we just talk about how insane this is? The people that wrote this movie made it so this character Gooch took a day long video of these three harassing and eventually murdering a girl and he didn't delete the video? Not only that, not once during this recording that we see do either of his friends tell him to stop recording them. Even after they kill the girl, he continues to record them, but they just allow this to happen for some inane reason. Gooch didn't think to delete this video afterwards. And neither of his two friends who knew that they were being recorded had ordered Gooch to delete the video. It's crazy. What's with the phone? What do you mean? Just like the also, I hate Onision's shiny, goofy suit jacket, but it definitely accurately reflects his gross personality. So good on the costume designers, I guess. Gucci's phone dies while Eden is watching the video. So she didn't get confirmation that these three were 100% responsible for Melissa's disappearance. But like, she knows, you know? It's pretty obvious. <laughs> It's like a 99% chance that they had something to do with it, but she's desperate to find out for sure for some reason. So desperate, in fact, that she refuses to let Onision and his goons into the room, and she orders them to bring her a charger so she can charge Gucci's phone so she can use it to call her dad to pick them up. She knows that they know that she knows. Why the hell would she be asking them for a charger? They're obviously not going to bring you one. She should have played dumb. Tell them that you don't know what phone they're talking about. Put the phone in your bra or your shoes or up your ass. Put it somewhere and leave the room. Go downstairs and find one of these party goers that you know. Any of the party goers would do. A bunch of them have their cars there and all these people go to the same high school. So she must know someone there that could drive her home. I know that her drunk friend is upstairs in the bed but her number one mission right now should be to secure the phone somewhere place where the goon platoon can't find it and then take care of her friend. Why didn't she ask someone at the party to help her with her drunk friend? Make up some excuse that you have to get home by a certain time or something. Tell them that your grandma just had a heart attack or something. Make up an excuse to get out of there with the phone. And I get that she's kind of freaking out right now, but it's infuriating to watch this because she makes the worst decisions. It would have been better to throw the phone out the window and 
take note of where it landed than to do what she did. So Eden eventually makes it clear to the goon platoon outside the door that she saw the video. She locked the door, by the way. She tells them that she'll scream if they don't get her a charger. Oh, yeah. Sure, dude, that's gonna work. <laughs> Obviously, Onision tells her that they'll get her a charger, and he's obviously lying. But for some reason, Eden doesn't catch on. The goon platoon go downstairs, and they end the party prematurely. They force everyone to leave. Wow, what a great opportunity they just gave Eden to rush downstairs and join the crowd of people leaving the party. She stays in the room! The movie tells us that she's stuck in there because she doesn't want to leave her drunk best friend behind. And I get it, these three are creepy. It would be irresponsible to leave her in there. But not once does she try to use the crowd to her advantage. The only thing she does is open a window and yell at the people who are actively leaving. But she does it far too late when most of the partygoers had already left. Also, Onision is able to get everybody out of this house in a matter of minutes. I'm sorry, but that isn't possible. I don't know if any of you watching have ever held a big party in high school before, but I have. And I'm telling you right now, from someone who tried and failed to do this before, trying to get a bunch of drunk kids out of your house in minutes is impossible. Let's go over the reasons why this makes no sense in the movie. They're in high school. A lot of high schoolers can't drive and would need to wait for their parents to pick them up. This would take some time. Eden and Zara are an example of this. Eden's dad drops them off at the party. Reason number two. Remember how Onision took everybody's phone? This means Onision and his friends need to hand out everyone's phone back to them. This in itself would take a long time. In the movie when everybody's forced to leave, it looks like they all just left their phones behind, which is insane. <laughs> This would not happen. They would definitely all demand their phones back before leaving. Oh no, finish your tweet. Reason number three. Those that can drive and don't have a designated driver would probably be too drunk to drive. So Onision would either have to force a bunch of kids to drive home drunk, or these drunk kids would have to find someone to drive them home, some of which would definitely have to call their parents or friend to come pick them up. All of which would take a long time. Reason number four. Convincing a bunch of drunk people people to do anything quickly is practically impossible. There would definitely be some people at this party that would be too drunk to function at all, just like Zara. So getting them all home would be near impossible. Reason number five. A lot of these kids would demand to know why the party is suddenly being shut down. That's oh, fucking lame. Yeah. I'm just saying. In reality, Eden would have a lot of time to think up some way to get out of this party with the phone and her drunk friend. Why the hell didn't she go downstairs and ask someone to help her with her friend. It makes no sense. <laughs> Okay, let's return to the movie. Eden asks Onision for a charger. They don't bring her one, obviously. Eden leaves the room when Onision is shutting down the party, and she finds a charger in a wall. She fails to get the charger because she's jumped by Gooch. She is able to close the door, though. They have a little tug of war with the charger, and it breaks. For some reason, Eden's number one priority right now is finding a way to charge this phone so she can finish watching the rest of this huge video. This this makes no sense, dude. The best part being, while watching this video, she would be able to see the length of this video. It would be hours long at least. When she first starts watching this video, it's daytime. When they finish watching the video, at the end of the movie, it's in the middle of the night. So Eden would know how long this video is. And she still wants to sit in this room for five hours watching it? Like, what the hell? Give me a charger and let me finish watching the video. It's so obvious that these three are guilty and she thinks that they'll allow her to sit in this room for all that time with Gooch's phone. Even if they didn't have this incriminating video, Gooch would want his phone. I'm just saying there's absolutely no way Gooch can go more than 30 minutes without playing Temple Run. <laughs> this dude is gonna need his phone. So Gooch tries to break the door down and fails. Eventually they decide to use a tiny hatchet on the door. How is it possible that they don't have a sledgehammer or a bigger axe in in this mansion. There's a rifle in this house and Onision uses it later. He could have used it to shoot the door open, I guess. I don't know. It would have been better than smacking at the door with a hatchet. <laughs> 
a lot of this movie so far boils down to these three goons trying to get into this room and failing. Eden pushes some furniture in front of the door. Eventually, Zara wakes up. And for some reason, Eden doesn't immediately tell her their predicament. Zara pukes and hangs out in the bathroom. Suddenly, Gooch is outside the bathroom window. He had used a ladder to get to it. And he's on the other side of the glass like, hey, Zara, let me in. And Zara doesn't wonder why he's outside the window in the first place. <laughs> She's just like, oh, hey, dude, sure, come on in. Even after he enters, she doesn't ask him why he was out there. Man, if only Eden had told her why the hell she had barricaded the door. If you're Zara, I don't care how drunk you are. If you know what's going on around you and you see your friend has barricaded the door, you would think Zara would have some questions for her, some very obvious questions. Trust me, guys, I've been pretty drunk before. As long as I'm not blackout drunk, I can tell if there's something going on around me that's wrong. I get that Zara is very drunk right now, but even a drunk person would ask why this weird shit is happening around them, you know what I mean? Gooch is now in the room, so it should be pretty easy for him to get the phone, right? He asks Eden for the phone, so she just kicks him in the balls, but it doesn't look convincing at all. Watch how it happens. Give me a back! Give me a back. <laughs> Even when Zara points that the phone is sitting on the bed, Zara doesn't ask her why she's barricading the door. This whole scene is amazing. <laughs> Gooch grabs the phone and basically allows Eden to whack him with a chair. <laughs> oh my God. Just watch how she hits him with the chair. And apparently this knocked him out. He's unconscious now. Okay, sure, movie. At this point in the movie, it's like Zara was never drunk. She's just miraculously sober now. It's like she didn't drink at all. It's pretty hilarious. Her speech is perfect. That looked expensive. She's walking around without a problem. It's like the director forgot to remind the actress that she's supposed to be drunk right now. <laughs> So Eden fills the bathtub and drags Gooch's unconscious body into the tub. He stays asleep for all of this until Eden splashes some water on his face because that's what would wake him up. Eden threatens Gooch's life with a plugged in hair dryer. <laughs> Dear Lord. Zara finally starts to freak out and still Eden fails to tell Zara what's going on. Eden is holding Gooch hostage. She's threatening his life. She had barricaded the door and still Eden has yet to inform Zara what the hell is going on. What is wrong with these girls? She orders Gooch to tell her where Melissa is. And finally Zara starts wondering what's going on. She's like, wait, this is all about Melissa? Zara shouldn't have just been been asking questions. She should have been demanding them. This movie is insanity. While watching it, I thought I was on drugs. Because there's literally no logic. An episode of Adventure Time makes more sense than this movie. Eden tells Onision what she's doing to Gooch because she desperately wants this charger still. Oh my god. So Onision just turns the power off to the house and hilariously, Gooch still acts like his life is in danger. Long after the power goes out. Remember Remember the ladder from earlier that Gooch used to get into the window? Well, Eden fails to realize that's how he entered the room until way after they were threatening his life. Why didn't Eden ask him how he got in the room? Why didn't she ask Zara how he got in the room? What the hell was she thinking? He enters the room and she's just like, oh, he must have phased through the wall or something. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. How did he <laughs> Obviously he came through a window. How else could he have entered? Why didn't she check all the windows after knocking him out? She could have easily found a way out of this room, but instead she decided to hold Gooch hostage? For a phone charger? It's insane. She took the time to fill the bathtub because she wanted to hold Gooch hostage for a phone charger. She would have had better luck trying to fight her way out at this point. Honestly, unbelievable what's happening in this movie right now. So as Eden and Zara are letting their scrambled egg brains rot, Kendra finds her way up the same ladder, only to be pushed off of it by Zara. <laughs> She lands with a knife she was holding in her back. How do you have to fall 
for the knife to land in your back. Imagine how awkward your body must be to land like this. Anyway, Kendra is a dumbass and pulls the knife out of her back to allow her body to bleed out faster. Eden finally thinks that it might be a good idea to go down this ladder. And then she finds Kendra bleeding out. She tries to think up a way to help. Onision rushes outside. Obviously, saving Kendra's life is paramount right now. But instead of trying to reason with Onision that Kendra's life comes first, she rushes back up the ladder into the room and... <laughs> What the hell's wrong with her? Why the hell didn't she try and run away from him normally? Going up the ladder could have easily resulted in her death. She barely makes it into the room as he pulls the ladder away. Onision drags Kendra's body into the house, which results in a huge blood smear. Wait a minute, there's, there's no blood. Where did the blood go? Who cleaned it? And still, he's more concerned about the video on Gucci's phone than he is about saving his friend's life. You're on the clock right now, dude. Get this girl to the hospital immediately or she's dead. They even have a car they can take. But Onision decides it's more important to get this phone. So he lets his friend bleed out in his house. Oh my God. I have to get that phone. <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, at least he gives her a towel. <laughs> She's making a mess after all. You're making a mess. <sighs> Gotta clean that up. He doesn't think to wrap her with something. Zara is completely insane in this movie, by the way. After Eden explains what's going on to Zara, Zara is against Eden taking Gucci's phone. Even after learning about the video that's on it, she wants Eden to give them the phone back. She tells Eden that they can go to the cops afterwards without the phone, without any evidence. Like, what the hell? It almost comes across like Zara was in on the crime. That's what my wife and I believed when we were watching this. But that's not the case. But for some insane reason, she is very determined to get this phone back to Gooch and the goons. They even get in a tussle over it. They physically fight over this. What? She is causing problems for Eden, basically only because the movie wants her to be a hindrance to her. To give Onision the time he needs to drag Kendra into the house. Why did he drag? her body into the house in the first place if he had no intention of saving her. Just leave her outside. Finally, Eden's dad shows up at the house. He finds the house completely dark with no sign of a party. He finds Eden's jacket, so he goes upstairs to find her. Onision bonks Eden's dad over the head. It doesn't knock him out, though. Onision threatens to kill Eden's father if she doesn't give the phone back. So obviously give it back without hesitation, right? But guess what Eden does? <laughs> Of course she hesitates, even with her dad's life on the line. And then Onision's parents arrive at the house. They came home early because Onision's mom is sick or something. Your mother wasn't feeling well. But she seems fine to me. They turn the power back on, and they all sit in a room to discuss what happened. Hilariously, they all forget about the girl that's dying in the house. They all just pretend that she doesn't exist. Not a soul lifts a finger to try and help her. Why isn't Eden, who had seen her injury, urged Urging them to call an ambulance. Why aren't her two friends doing anything to help her? What the hell? She's literally bleeding out in the next room. She dies in the house as these people are discussing their options. It's insane. And none of these options they're discussing involve Kendra. It's so funny. These people were not in a rush. Where is Kendra? So yeah, they watch the video and it shows Onision getting angry at Melissa because she's not giving him the time of day or something. Eventually, the psycho runs her over with his car. Gooch films all of this. He even films them dumping the body. And I know I've already said this, but it's just so funny. Nobody thought about deleting this video. It's hilarious. So yeah, Eden's big dilemma right now is this. She can either give the phone back and keep her mouth shut about all this. And in return, Onision's dad will help her get into the college of her dreams, or she can take the phone and try and ruin their lives. Obviously, these people won't let them leave the house with the phone. It just isn't happening, you know? Eden's dad uses a cane to walk. He can't help them fight back at all. Why are they even having this conversation? Onision's parents served Eden, Zara, and Eden's dad a drink before they watched this video, and they all drank these drinks. Obviously, these drinks are drugged. So all three of these people end up being drugged. Oh, yeah. Onision ends up murdering Gooch. So, yeah. Uh, Onision is kind of a sociopath. Well, a psychopath now, right? Yeah, so Gooch is dead. <laughs> 
So yeah, this rich family plans on framing Eden and Zara for the deaths of Gooch and Kendra. And her dad, I guess. I don't know, they throw them all in a car and they drive the car into a lake. By the way, Eden, Zara, and Eden's dad were drugged in such a way that renders them paralyzed. After the car is driven into the lake, we cut to Eden and Zara swimming to safety? What? Weren't they drugged? I guess the shock of the water snapped them out of this drug paralysis or something. I don't know. <laughs> Convenient. Eden's dad sadly drowned though. So rest in peace, Eden's dad. In the next scene, Eden gets revenge on Onision's dad. She bonks him. Then she kills Onision's mom by electrocuting her in the bathtub. It's a pretty hilarious scene. They make it all slow-mo. Eden kicks the hairdryer into the water. <laughs> This is the next day, by the way. So I guess Onision's mom just left the plugged in hairdryer near the filled bathtub. Very smart. <laughs> During the scene when Eden kills Onision's mom, Eden was impaled by a shard of glass. It's a pretty gnarly injury. And of course she pulls it out because, you know, she's in this movie. So her blood spews everywhere. She doesn't think to use a tourniquet or a belt or anything. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> Onision arrives home and finds his two parents dead. He walks outside and finds Eden in a car. She speeds towards Onision, who fires a rifle at her. She hits him with the car and sends him flying. Obviously all she needs to do now is run him over a second time, right? Instead, she gets out of the car, knowing full well she has a busted leg. She goes to pick up the rifle so she can shoot him. She decides against it at the last second for whatever reason. He walks up to her, makes a dumb comment about going to school the next day. School's gonna be real weird on Monday. As he limps towards her, he makes this really awkward moaning sound. Zara comes out of nowhere and bonks Onision in the head with the butt of the rifle. The shit covered cherry on top of this awful movie is when Onision says, You're killing me. You're killing me. Just before he drops to the ground and dies. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the actress that played Onision's mom was involved in an insane accident that led to her death. So yeah, there's that. This movie is hilarious. I highly recommend it. Don't forget to check out AlienClothing.com, my personal clothing brand. That's A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N Clothing.com. We have a bunch of awesome clothes over there based on sci-fi and monsters and just random stuff that I like. Thank you so much to all my patrons that make videos like this possible. If you're scrolling up the screen right now, I love you. You can join them by going to patreon.com slash Elvis the Alien. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you'd like me to review next in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!